Welcome to HumanBodyHelp.com's line of educational videos. For more videos like this and other resources for learning anatomy and physiology, please visit my website at www.HumanBodyHelp.com. In this video, I'll be running through the bones of the axial skeleton. Now the axial skeleton is along the central axis of the body and it consists of the skull. It also consists of the vertebral column, which we can see here, going through this all the way down to here. Right? It also consists of the hyoid bone, which is going to be underneath the chin here. The axial skeleton also consists of the sternum and rib cage. So all those bones are bones of the axial skeleton. Now this is the sternum right here. We're looking at the anterior surface of the sternum. This would be superior and this would be inferior. The sternum is divided into three parts. We have this part up here which is the manubrium of the sternum. We would have our clavicles attach right here. This part of the manubrium would be considered the jugular notch. Then there's a joint right here. And this joint separates the manubrium of the sternum from the body of the sternum. So the body of the sternum is right here. And then there's another joint. And that articulates with the xiphoid process right here. Xiphoid is a term that means sword. And early anatomists thought this looked like the tip of a sword. Okay. These structures here would be costal cartilages made of hyaline cartilage and they would help to attach the ribs to the sternum but allow some flexibility so that our rib cage can expand and contract when we breathe. The upper ribs are smaller and then they get larger down toward the central area of the rib cage and then start to get smaller again as we go down to the bottom. Okay. Now we've got 12 pairs of ribs here attaching to the 12 thoracic vertebrae. These first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ribs are directly attached to the sternum through costal cartilage. So those ribs are called true ribs. We also call them vertebrosternal ribs. Now ribs 8, 9, and 10, as well as 11 and 12, those are considered false ribs. And we have two types of false ribs. We have 8, 9, and 10, which are vertebrochondral ribs. They attach posteriorly to the vertebral column and then anteriorly to costal cartilage, which then attaches to the lowermost costal cartilage of the true ribs. Remember, this was rib 7. So ribs 8, 9, and 10 are called vertebrochondral ribs. And you'll notice down here we've got 11 and 12. Those are vertebral ribs. They don't attach anteriorly to the sternum or car costal cartilage. Okay? Sometimes these are referred to as floating ribs because of the lack of an anterior attachment. Now I want to go through the vertebral column next. And in order to do that, I need to rotate the skeleton so that you can see the posterior side. So this region up here is the cervical region. This is the cervical spine. There are seven bones in the cervical spine. We have the atlas, then the axis, and then C3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This C7 vertebra has a nice big spinous process known as the vertebral prominence. There's actually a ligament known as the nuchal ligament that attaches from here up to the external occipital protuberance, which is on the occiput posterior aspect of the skull. 
that nuchal ligament helps to support the head. It's made of elastic tissue so that when you flex your head forward or flex your neck forward, this elastic tissue will help to bring the head back up along with the contraction of the musculature on the back of the neck. This nuchal ligament used to be known as the paddy whack. You may have heard of knick knack paddy whack, give your dog a bone. Right? Well, the paddy whack on farm animals used to be given to dogs to chew on. A little snack, a little treat for the dogs. But anyways, this is where the nuchal ligament would attach, down here at the vertebral prominence C7. The next vertebra, these are thoracic vertebra here. Okay? One nice clue that you can use to help you tell that these are thoracic vertebra is the thoracic vertebra have ribs attached. Okay? So we have 12 thoracic vertebra. And then down here, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we have the lumbar vertebra. And they tend to be the largest vertebra of the vertebral column because they hold the most weight. The cervical vertebra tend to be smaller. They hold less weight. Then the thoracic vertebra get larger and the lumbar vertebra are even larger. And again, it's because they hold more weight. Now down here, we have the sacrum, which is made up of five fused bones. And then we have the tailbone down here, or the coccyx. And that can be made up of anywhere between three and five fused bones as well. Okay. So cervical region, thoracic region, lumbar region. The cervical spine has seven vertebrae. You eat breakfast at seven. The thoracic spine has 12 vertebrae. You eat lunch at 12. And then the lumbar spine has five vertebrae. So you eat dinner at five. That's one way to remember that. Now normally, when you look straight P to A or posterior to anterior, you should not notice any lateral curves. If you do, then that's called scoliosis. And scoliosis can show up in varying degrees a little curve to major curves, but there are also other curves in the spine. And they're easier to see if we look at the spine laterally. Now, this curve up here is the cervical lordosis. Then we have the thoracic kyphosis, and then the lumbar lordosis and then the sacral kyphosis. Okay. Now, this cervical curvature right here is concave to the posterior. This thoracic curvature is concave to the anterior. And this lumbar curvature is concave to the posterior and sacral is concave to the anterior. Now, the first curves that form are the thoracic curve and the sacral curve. Okay? If you can imagine this skeleton in the fetal position, the fetal position, the body would be curved. Okay? But then what happens is the youngster will start to lift its head and develop this cervical curve. Okay? And then when the youngster starts to walk, the lumbar curve will develop. And what this curvature does is help to keep the head over the center of gravity, which is in the pelvis. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.